There's a place where old feed mills stand silent and church bells await Sunday morning services. A place where gently rolling hills are home to cattle farms and where neighbors still talk over fences. Deep in this valley are echoes of a time long past and a place where a once thriving industry provided a meeting place, commerce, and food for the fledgling community it served. We're on the banks of Montauk Creek right here in Cooper County, Missouri. Hi, I'm Jim Bebrock. This is Dick's Mill. Let's take a look around. Dick's Mill is currently not operational and is scheduled to be moved soon. Let's go inside and meet my friend Bob Painter and take a look at the equipment that is being salvaged. <laughs> so the Missouri River Valley Steam Engine Association is based out of Boonville, Boonville, uh, Missouri. It was started in 1964. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncles uh, on my mom's side were the, the three guys that them and there's another five or six and eventually there ended up being i think 20 uh original charter members but the first first year that anything was done was my uncles and a couple other guys got their steam engine just for the fun of it and decided to thresh wheat right. they're on their farm right and the next year you know people started you know some more showed up and they did it and they said well, we need to do this start an organization and so then they formed the club right and uh it got bigger but um uh, and then kind of a Another twist, my uncle uh, with the Steam Engine Association, Harold Holler, in uh, the early 70s, bought the gas engine out of this mill that had replaced the original steam engine. And it was a 25 horsepower Bauer, and I've got mm -hmm. some photographs of it. But that engine my uncle had bought and uh, had it for some years at our steam engine show. And then a gentleman in Kansas bought it, and it's been in his barn ever since. And, and I'd like to see if we could eventually get it back to run the mill, you know, along with if we have a steam engine. And we've got that one needs some work and parts, but uh, uh, eventually I'd like to have it set up where we can show it to tourists on weekends uh, through the year when the steam engine show is not going on. Mm -hmm. And if you did decide to run it, starting up that gas engine would be a lot easier than trying to build up steam and run it with steam engine. Right, so, right. If we rig it up with both, that would be that would be what I would really like to see happen. Okay, so Dick's Mill was ran by a steam engine, but this isn't the original one. What, tell me a little bit about the original one. Uh, the original uh, was bought, salvaged from a riverboat that sank in the river at Boonville, Missouri. Uh, evidently, somewhere during or shortly after the Civil War. I don't know how what period. However, uh, they uh, shipped it by train to Tipton, Missouri, which is where I think the rail line ended. And then from Tipton, they shipped it back north on a wagon with teams. And uh, that steam engine ran this mill then up until, uh, there's some differences in opinion, I think somewhere probably around 1905 to 1910 maybe, I'm not sure. At that time, uh, they replaced the steam engine with a uh, less problematic uh, 25 horsepower Bauer gas engine that was built in Kansas City, Missouri. And that particular Bauer was uh, evidently the only one built. The company did not remain business long after that. So, so it's a fairly rare engine and it does still exist. Dick's Mill is scheduled to be moved to the Missouri River Valley Steam Engine Association showgrounds. Finding and categorizing the components is an important part of the process. You know, like you now this piece of equipment Nancy gave me yesterday, I had it at her house. Did that go uh -huh, that's under the shoe? Uh -huh, that's it, the shoe. So, and this has been rebuilt. I know this is it, not original. Right. This is a this is the hopper. This is the horse. This is the shoe. And then there would have been. Um, this is part of it or would have been, but there would have been another dowel rod that comes across here. Okay. And there would be a string on that. And the, the shoe hangs down, like, so it'll be in under here. Okay. It, okay. It would hang below it. Yeah, then. and then there's there's a rod that, so there's, you know, obviously this is the furniture housing and there's pieces missing from this mm. exact piece. But there's a rod that goes down through here that has a square on it. 
and it rotates with it. And okay. It, and it shakes that. Okay. Okay, and that's called the damsel, and it would go through right here. Okay. Okay. Um, and then that string um, allows you to raise or lower this end of the shoe to control the flow. Okay. So you not only could you control the flow here. But you could control the flow into the stone okay. through your shoe mm -hmm. that way. Are we assuming that the millstone sat here? I see the shaft. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a shaft coming through the wall. Right. And uh, some of that's original woodwork that I could I could tell. So, yeah, the, the stone sat right there. There's actually a curvature where that little sign is. You can see where uh, okay. it fit in there. Yeah. So the, the millstones, given their weight, um, sit on their own foundation. Right. And then the building's kind of built around them. Mm -hmm. And they're twofold for that. The, one is to carry the tremendous weight. Uh, these stones are giant. These, right. these stones are probably going to weigh 3,000 pounds or so each. Um, and then, so they need their own, their own but they vibrate. Yeah, keep it from and shaking the building, shake apart. The building apart, right? It'll yeah. walk those pegs right out of right. The, the deal. So yeah. that's, that's what that would have been for. And so And a lot of that structure has been rotted off. Jim Martin has started rebuilding some of it, but I, I'm trying to figure out the pieces and put it, but, you know, get an idea how we're going to have to rebuild it. You know, these are, these are big stones too. These are like 48 inch stones, maybe a little taller than that. Right. Um, maybe 52, that one over there, maybe 52. It's maybe a little taller than I haven't measured them. But um, they, they would sit down in this furniture house. So the, the bedstone is the stationary stone. And I'm, I'm assuming we'll go look at it in a minute. That one over there is the bedstone. This one has the, 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 the little horseshoe thing in it for right. the, being the running stone. So the, the bedstone sits down in the floor. It would have it would have been where that concave is that you're yeah. talking about in that, right. that part. Shaft comes up through the middle and it holds the upper stone, the running stone, in place. And, it, and the running stone sits inside this furniture housing. This is called a vat, technically. Mm -hmm. um, and then it it turns, and you'd have been able to adjust it up or down for mm -hmm. um, the the coarseness that you were trying to get um, out of the stones. And really, that's that's it. I mean, they're very simple. Um, in their in their design and in their construction, and they're very efficient. Um, you know, they've got the grooves in them that has to be recut from time to time, right. um, and not as often as you would think. Hmm. You know, I used to think they'd have to recut them all the time, but <clears throat> some of the folks that are running these mills say it's years. Hmm. Um, now I don't know if you're running it every single day, all day long. Right. You know, if it's faster than that or not. But uh, apparently, the stones are pretty durable, um, and a, a lot of them um, are made of granite. Um, a lot of them made out of uh, limestone. Right. Um, their local stones um, would would have been um, a little cheaper, perhaps, than the the modular ones that are came from France that right. are granite. But the, the ones from France were by far more popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about the journey that stone has had. I know. I heard yeah. they used them as ballast in yeah. the ships. Right. So so think over. about. I mean, today we're so spoiled. Today, you know, you you pick up the, or get on the computer and order a millstone from Amazon mm -hmm. and there's a truck sitting out front the next day with it, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in the 1800s, you had to hire somebody to take your money and go to France, pick out the stones mm -hmm. and personally bring that stone all the way back. I mean, yeah. I can't even imagine what that would cost today. Yeah. You hear story. What I, I think one of the things I love about going to all these different mills, all the different stories and folklore that you hear about them. Um, but one of them we were at recently the guy mentioned how they deal with the stones if somebody ever got hurt. And you yeah. can imagine getting hurt in a place like this was probably pretty common. Yeah. Particularly if you're trying to flip this over and, um, and dress sorry. it. Um, he's, he said that the superstition was that if, if you just got hurt using the millstone, then they would lean it up against the building outside. And if somebody got killed with the millstone, then they would put it in the ground. This is this stone has to weigh well in excess of two thousand pounds. Wow! You know, and think about that weight sitting right there. Yeah. You know, for fifty years, you know, constant pressure will bend anything. Right. Yeah. I sure wouldn't want this thing falling over on my toes. I can tell you that. Uh. The greenery downstairs, now, did the, when people brought grain, I mean, that greenery is pretty big. So mm -hmm. people sometimes obviously brought a lot of grain. Mm -hmm. Did they carry it all in and dump it in mm -hmm. through these trap doors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, these are called floor sinks. It depends on if the farmer had a sheller at home. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have a sheller at home, the, the mill would have had a sheller. Sure. They, they would have either, you know, the sheller probably would have sat right over one of these holes. Mm -hmm. If they weren't done, um, they would have hand cranked them in 
and the kernels would fall down in there because all the mill needs is the kernels. The cobs then would have been sent back or um, sent back, you know, to the farm to feed the hogs with or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you know, the steam engine would have burned those kernel or those those cobs just as easily. So and nothing was wasted, but those those kernels would be in there. They'd be elevated up to the top to a cleaner, mm -hmm. um, a cleaner separator shaker, um, and it would get all the chaff and dust stuff like that out of it. Um, and then it would make its way back to the, the grinder because you want yeah. clean product going into the, the stone mill. Right. There, there would have been a scale. Um, you know, they would have weighed, you know, the, the wheat kernels. They uh, would have, there's two scales that I had taken home I've got right now. They're, they're just the regular ones you see at sales of any farm. Uh, mm -hmm. One's a Howe, mm -hmm. the other one's a Fairbanks, two platform scales. One, the Howe was in a little worse shape, looked like the older one. So, you know, I don't know if that was the originals that would have been in here. Uh, you know, I forget yeah. the, even the patent dates on that one. Uh, it seemed like that Hal had a patent date of 1867 or 8, so maybe it is an original. Could be. But, uh, yeah, well, they would have had to weigh it because, right. uh, you know, the, the millwright got paid either directly um, or he took what they referred to as a toll. Right. Yeah, and the, the, the amount of, of material that the millwright kept was what he bagged for himself and then sold. Right. You know, to the general store, or sold directly to the other town folk yeah. you know, around that didn't have farms. So it worked yeah. out really, really well. Mm. This is a flower packer, and you know, it's a it's relatively uh, functional at this point. Um, it runs off a belt pulley over here that runs an auger that goes in here. This is this would be the hopper. From the final product of the bolters upstairs this would be where the final baggable flower would be and they would do these in small batches because of the insects mm -hmm. you know the weevils and stuff that would get in there and so they would do these in small packages uh, batches so you you talk about some of these bins um they could actually be holding some unprocessed wheat for later use mm -hmm. um i'm i'm assuming they would have done it more in i Farmer John has 500 pounds, and when Farmer John's 500 pounds is exhausted, then he's done. Something yeah. along those lines. But, okay. um, but there, there's an auger in here that moves this, that, that packs it into what I'm guessing is going to be a flower sack that would have been brought up to this. Right. As the sack starts to fill with, with the material, it's going to get heavier, and it's going to start to push down on, on, on this process. Yeah. Um, and a mill this size could do... Um, probably with a single roller, probably 15, 20 barrels a day, huh. you know, which is a lot. Yeah. It's a lot if you think about wow. it. They did corn a little bit differently. Corn was done on a first come, first serve, but corn had a shelf life. Yeah. So, um, they had laws about, you had to bring, you know, the first person that was here got serviced and everybody, you couldn't bump somebody in line because you were buddies or whatever like okay. that. We think about this mill being so labor intensive but really the hardest part of the whole thing is unloading the dang wagon dick's mill features several bolters on the second level the purpose of the bolter is to separate flour as it moves through the refining process after several runs through the system, the flour is ready to be sacked or put in a barrel so it can be offered for sale in the local general store. I think this is a, a smutter. Um, and what its purpose is, is to separate the wheat grain um, out a little bit and also remove the wheat grain that is uh, contaminated with a, a mold called smut uh, or something similar to that. Um, and it, uh, it, it would separate that contaminated uh, germ out and and discard it so that it wouldn't hmm. be part of the part of what goes into the grinders and then it cleans cleans it up before it goes to the roller mill so this was you know this was you know early food food protection here well i, I didn't talk about it downstairs because i wanted to come up here because the, the better illustration for the structure of the building is right. up here um, and I'm just in awe of how how cool this is. And there, there's a name for this, but I'm I'm not a I'm not an old right. barn expert. But there, there's a name for this the style. Yeah, of, if you're of a, far back here, that's one of the first things I noticed when I was talking about moving it. When you're back at the back and you look up, 
it, it almost looks like that structure was built with the equipment and then they built the building around it. Uh -huh. it. It probably wasn't, but it just gives you that feeling the way you look at that whole structure with all the elevators and the equipment in it. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I, I do a little woodworking. So, you know, the mortise and tendon joinery uh, mm -hmm. in here and how tight it is. I mean, we're, this building's knocking on 200 years old and uh, I mean, these joints are still super tight. You know, it, you could, it looks like, you know, when, when they go to disassemble this, they're just going to drive those pins out. Yeah. You know, and that's all that's holding that together. it will be kind of a bittersweet day the day they take this apart. Right. But, um, when you think about the new life it's going to have right. and the new love it's going to have um, versus just sitting down here and year after year after year it deteriorating, it's going to become a, a showpiece, right. a centerpiece. Um, for your all's club and people will be able to come in they'll be able to step into a time capsule yeah. and see how things were done you know way back when in the 1800s early 1900s and, and get an appreciation for how hard people worked right um how different life was then from today <laughs>